Hello, this is Terry from Fabric Junction in Sturgis, South Dakota. And today we're going to make an apron that I called Mom's Apron. If you remember, my grandmother wore a full apron, but my mother only wore what I call a half apron. And today we're going to I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to put it together. I have the cuts listed here, but they will also be posted on our website so you can get them there. I have my pieces cut and some of it I've already started, such as I've already pressed my interfacing to the waistband and folded in the sides. And if you notice, your interfacing won't go from end to end, and that's okay. I mainly needed it to stabilize across the front. And because I fold about an inch and a half in, that makes the sides sturdy enough for what we're going to do today. I also have a pocket and the body of our apron, which I have started a little bit by hemming the side. So the first thing we're going to do is hem the side. And when I do this, and you're welcome to press, but I have been sewing for a long time, so I tend to just turn. It's just a turn, turn. And I do, it's not quite a quarter inch, just a nice single turn and then turn it once more and it's a hair more than a quarter inch not quite a full half inch so uh, close to the edge Okay, once you have your sides done, you need to turn your hem. And on this particular one, I turned it an inch and a half. And the way I did it is I actually just fold up and I lay my ruler an inch and a half and I press. And once again, if you're comfortable pinning it, that's fine. There is no rule against it. I just measure a half inch, I go down my row, and I keep pressing. And as you can see, I actually have part of the hem pressed in, but I didn't finish it clear to the very end. If you lose your mark on your ruler, put a piece of painter's tape on there, and that way you can follow it along. But just kind of keep lining things up and you want to make sure that this end here is lined up straight this way you don't want it to go outward which can happen you can get it to start going that direction but you don't want it to so once I have that now I'm back to the machine and I just turn about that same distance just a little bit down start and on this particular intersection I do back stitch a little bit and then I proceed and when I as you can see this is how I do it I turn a little bit at the end of my machine and I sew that far I go to my end I turn a little bit tuck in and sew things I'm looking at while I'm sewing. My needle is close to the edge, but I also know where this bottom of my hem, where it lines up on the machine here. 
And so I kind of keep an eye on that to make sure. That's part of how I keep it straight, is I just kind of follow a point. So to do this, you just need to be comfortable with your machine. When you get to the end, like I said, you want to make sure it stays lined up with the edge. You don't want it to overextend. And it's okay if it's just a smidgen short on the inside. You just don't want it to be poking out the side. And sometimes the feed dogs will, by the time you get to the end, they'll make it even. As you approach the end, once again, I do back stitch on this because I'm not going to cross that seam again, and so on. Okay, now we have <clears throat> our apron. We have it hemmed on the sides. We have it hemmed on the bottom. So the next step is actually to set your machine for the longest stitch you can make because we need to make a gathering. Make your long stitch and stitch along the edge, which I have already done. And you can see so that we can gather. We're not going to gather it right this moment because we want to put our pocket on. To make the pocket, you cut a long rectangular piece in which we will match right sides together. And again, so, and I'm actually using a quarter inch seam on this section. And I do back stitch whenever I know I'm not going to cross that seam. Now the bottom section I do last, and this is where I leave my opening. And it varies. I just sew part way across, lift my needle, my foot, I move forward. I make sure I always cross my corners. It'll make much cleaner corners that way. I don't backstitch when I cross because sometimes my opening, I leave it so small I can't get it turned. And then I discover I'm ripping out stitches to get it to turn. When you have it done, as you can see, I'm cl clipping the corner so I can eliminate some of the bulk in the side. And sometimes I do just a little bitty clip at the top. And now I turn. Once you have a turn, you need to push out your corners. And as you can see, I use my tweezers. You might have a stiletto, you might have anything that can, will turn those to give you a nice corner will work. Once we get all four corners, out, we'll press it. Okay. You want to line up the seam. And I do my sides first because that is a closed seam. Then for the bottom where the opening is, I tuck that in, line it so it looks straight across, and press it. Now 
Now the advantage of this particular pocket is you can look, let's say because I can see a little bit of ridge right here, I know I want that to be on the underside of my pocket because that will give me a cleaner look. So I take it and lay it on the way I want the top. Now the placement of the pocket is three inches up from the bottom. So I place my ruler, I put my pocket three inches, I check all the way across. Now that part looks pretty good, but I know I'm too close here, so I'm going to scoot over and double check that I'm three inches across. You'll be six inches in on the side. So you can just kind of follow it up. Double check, droop down just a little. Once you have the placement, stick in the pins. And I just pin, I've got something underneath I don't want to catch, there we go. I pin clear out of my range of sewing. I just want to make sure that pocket stays right where I want it. <clears throat> okay, we will sew the pocket. And I'll show you something that I had an aunt show me a long time ago. I was having trouble with pockets ripping out. And my Aunt Carol showed me a trick on when you put in a pocket. Now, as you can see, I'm working with it from the wrong way. Because what I want to do is right here, I want to make a rectangle. Right there. And this is how I do it. I don't worry about measuring it. I've, I know approximately where I want to go. And I only want to go this distance that equals oh, about four or five stitches. So I start out slow. I aim for the edge. Needle down. Turn everything. Stitch forward. And this one I do reverse because I want to make sure this is secure. I don't want that ripping out. Finally, with the needle down, now I'm ready to go around the pocket. And I do so close to the edge. I get to the bottom, turn. Now this will catch my opening so I didn't have to hand sew it. Now I need to finish off with that little triangle again. So I'm going to take about four or five stitches, reverse, back, and then to come back in an angle. And I have my pocket done. Now the nice thing is, is it looks nice. Even with the little triangles in the corners, it looks nice. And that's the kind of pocket I did on all my kids' clothes and I didn't have to worry about the pocket ripping open. So our next step is now we will gather the top so we can put on our waistband. So you get your thread straightened out. You only want to pull one. It doesn't make any difference if it's the top one or the back one. And I forgot to mark center, but in this case I do have a mark there where that fold is, so I know that is my center. And 
And when I gather, I tend to gather more, meaning tighter than what I'm actually going to need. Because I discovered it was easier for me to let a little of it out after I started pinning things together than to try to push it together. So I have it. It doesn't look super pretty at the moment, but that that's okay. Because now, this is when I even out my ruffles, line up my center of my waistband, right sides together, slip in a pin, and then I can line up this edge. So I want those two to line up also. Okay, now is when I even out my ruffles. And I just take them and gradually work them towards the spots that don't have any. Working a few out because, like I said, I know I'd had too many. But just very gently work my ruffle across. And once I have it, where I think it looks really good, that I've got them pretty even. Stick a few pins in to keep it placed exactly where I want it. Okay. We have them pinned. Now we're ready to sew. Start on the edge, and I like my ruffles to be looking at me. And again, I'm using about a quarter inch seam. Doesn't have to be exact. If you want to use a hair more, you can, but I wouldn't use much more than that. When you start out, back stitch on that section. And as you can see, sometimes I just go through and readjust my ruffle just a little bit as I'm sewing. Pull my pins out as I go. Make sure everything's lined up. Towards the end, back stitch a little and sew off. Okay, we have our waistband on. So now our next step is, is we're actually going to finish it. So to do that, you need to roll up the body of your apron. 
and roll it pretty tight. It's okay that this is sticking out, that's not going to hurt anything, but you want to roll this tight so that you can actually pin these two together. And this we're going to sew again. So when you pin, make sure you're not catching any part of your apron. Otherwise, when we go to turn this, your apron will be stuck in that seam. Line up on the sides. <clears throat> okay, and now we're ready to sew. And like I said, the trick to this is to make sure that you don't catch the body of it. So what I'm going to do, actually where my seam is from the ruffle, that's the seam I'm going to follow. Because hopefully with that seam, I'm not going to pick up any more of the apron. So I follow that seam. And it, as you can see, it is kind of slow going, but that's okay because this makes a very nice finish to a waistband. bit of the apron popping out in the wrong spot. So pushed it back. Okay, this is the part we hope that I didn't catch any of that in there. And it does take a little bit of time to get this to turn. So slowly turn the top over. And then as you can, keep kind of pulling the inside out. And working the top down and pulling the inside. So it doesn't like to pull quite as fast as when we do this on a pillowcase. I'm going to have it all wadded up here in a minute. Okay. I think what I'll do for time 
is I'll have my lovely assistant finish turning that for me while I show you how to make your straps. You'll need two straps. I have one finished. They are the length of the fabric. And as you can see, I don't cut off my salvages um, because they're not, it's not going to make any difference. But put your right side together and start to stitch. And I've got part of this one done. So to the edge. And on this one, because I want a 45 degree angle, I happen to use my folded quarter clipper on this. And I want the short part to be where my seam is, the longer section to be towards the salvage. So I place, there we go figure out so that to make sure that I ha I'm cutting the majority off here and the least here. Now as you can see I bypassed my salvage on here. I know this measures three inches so I have it lined up. I can cut it. I can follow my quarter inch seam and I know I have the correct angle that I want for this project. back stitch a little on the point because I don't want it to come out and then sew off. Once I have that sewn I trim away some of that extra. I trim away a little bit down here on that other intersection and turn. Now for me I use whatever gets the job done and in this case I have this is an actual a crochet hook.